The only reason she agreed to see Luscious Lucius the Hypnotist was because as a child she was intrigued by the Hocus Pocus act of hypnotism and wanted to witness it as a mature adult. She and her friends had spent nearly an hour debating whether or not hypnotism was real and then who would volunteer to participate in the show. Evie was feeling particularly adventurous and said she'd give it a go. Her skepticism for the whole thing made it an easy decision. Inside was dim and smelled of incense. Six-foot pillar candles illuminated the sides of the tent. Guttural droning sounds of music played from hidden speakers that Evie couldn't locate. It wasn't obnoxiously loud, but it wasn't her taste either. This kind of chest-pounding music always sounded like noise was just vomiting from the speakers. Welcome, a silky feminine voice greeted her. She turned and looked into the dark gray eyes of a woman with long, wavy blonde hair that Evie would have killed for. Oh, hi. I think I'm in the wrong place, Evie said. Is this a private show? You're in the right place. There were women everywhere talking with one another. Some were leaning closely as if they were telling secrets. Or maybe they were lovers about to kiss. Trust me. The hostess plucked a mushroom-shaped chip from her own pouch, eyed Evie with something of a sexual nature, then ate it. You're going to love these. The room suddenly seemed to become more vibrant. The darkness was in shadowed layers. The white silk of the women's toga shimmered and floated with their subtle movements. The palpitating music now buzzed in her ears. She tried to shake the confusion away, but it remained. Is this a lesbian show? It's nice to sort of let loose, you know? Having such a beautiful woman think she was attractive made her feel good, valuable. Too bad Adam didn't look at her with the same fervor. Her head was spinning a little. That was weird. She didn't taste alcohol in the tea. Suddenly, she didn't think those chips were just chips. But why don't I have a pair of wings like all the other women? She asked. The hostess, with a sly, sexy smile, said, Oh, you'll have to earn those. Agreed, a masculine voice said. Her head swam as she turned. She couldn't see a man anywhere. Who was that? She asked. That was Lucius, the hostess said. Would you like to meet him? There was now a man sitting in the chair with his chin on a single finger looking directly at Evie. His other hand was squeezing the breast of a woman. The top of her toga had been pulled to the side. She was on her knees. Her face was down, covered by both of her own hands. The poor woman looked absolutely mortified at such a public display, all of which made him frightening to look upon. He slowly walked towards her. It must have been a trick of the light, because as he came nearer, his hair became brown and then almost black. His face was perfect. It was too perfect. The peculiar dizziness came again, and then Evie wondered if maybe it was a hypnotist trick. She felt as though she was being pulled into a trance. Lucius's face became fuzzy and then clear, and then it suddenly changed altogether. His forehead bulged out with spines flanking his hairline. Eyebrow ridges and cheekbones seemed to become pointed, and his chin grew long, 
devilishly long. His preternatural look was suddenly gone, and now Evie was looking back at the flawlessly perfect face of Lucius the Hypnotist once again. Welcome, he said. Thank you. She felt as though she was forgetting something, though. Then she asked, Are you hypnotizing me? The blonde laughed a soft, sexy laugh in Evie's ear, then pulled her away from the hypnotist. She led her to a couch that was on the other side of the tent, but she could still feel his eyes on her. He was also smiling. Her stomach did a couple of flip-flops, and then she suddenly felt her thighs become wet. Her knees were shaking. She suddenly wanted to fuck.